The Musama Thoughts Podcast. Striving for Jenna. Dive for Jenna. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to the first episode of the Musama Thoughts Podcast, run by us, NW Sisters. On this episode today, we are going to introduce ourselves, how we began, why we began, and just give you an insight insight into who we are and what we represent as NW Sisters. On this panel today, we have myself, Ariel. I have also with me three of the sisters of NW Sisters who will introduce themselves shortly, and two of our sisters who cannot be with us today, unfortunately, we have Sister Atz, who is working behind the scenes as our director and editor, just making sure everything's running smoothly. We have Sister Maya, who is a fitness coach and personal trainer at My Active on Instagram, so check her out, um, who cannot be with us as well. So quickly just introducing ourselves and giving us insight again to who we are, what we want to do. Zay, Z, do you want to go ahead? Assalamu alaikum, I'm Z. I'm, my role within the Northwest Sisters group is the technological person sort of thing. Um, if you receive an email from Northwest Sisters, it's most likely from me. Um, I have a background in education and my hobby is learning new languages. Back to you, uh, uh, Ariel. Nice. Yeah, so Z is really, really great at all that technical stuff that and admin stuff that none of us want to do, but she's great at. Thanks, Z. <laughs> um, we have Sister Lima. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Lima. I run the Sunday Halakas, if you may know, inshallah. And um, a hobby of mine is skateboarding. Nice. MashaAllah. So um, every Sunday we do, for the past few months, we've been doing um, Halakat every Sunday where we discuss different topics um, and issues that affect us as Muslim women, mainly related to Islam, but we then link it to social issues and how it impacts us, which inshallah is what we're trying to achieve with this podcast as well, um, but sort of broadening what we um, what we speak about. Um, we also have Sister Khola with us. Khola, let's take it away. Hello, guys. Um, I'm Khola. Uh, I think my role, I'd say is all the you know the posts on nw sisters if you've seen a post i mean we all do the post together but if you've seen a post it's most likely that i've made it um in terms of hobbies i'd just say canva canva is my hobby i'm on that app all the time <laughs> i spend a lot of time on that app and yeah that's how i make the posts but yeah inshallah you guys are enjoying all the content we're posting on instagram and if you're listening to this right now make sure you send us a little dm let us know what what type of content you guys want to see um, what type of post you guys want to see as well but yeah that's a little bit about me inshallah so yeah as Khola said she is basically if you see the dm is from her because Khola is like our social media manager she manages everything to do with social media the dms the posts the comments etc and um, the posts we all do contribute so it's from all of us um but it's mainly Khola who does the creative part of that so um, now that we've um, introduced ourselves, oh wait, I'm Ariel. I am, Ariel's not my actual name, by the way. Um, we all have nicknames apart from Bola. And um, I'm the host of this podcast and my, I am a teacher by profession. So let's get into guys, um, how we started and why. So how we started um, goes back to last year, February where Zay and I and Atz were on a call and I was sort of just ranting to them at like what 11 p.m at night complaining (laughs) as I usually do as to why there's not enough for sisters in northwest London you know we always have to trek to east London and different parts of London to for classes or courses or just events in general for sisters and there was I just felt like there was a real absence not just for Islamic things but just that sisterhood in general you know what I mean um, so I was just sort of ranting to them and then, you know, they agreed with me, et cetera. And then they sort of encouraged me. It was like, well, you know, why don't you just, why, can't, why don't you start something? And I was like, no, there's, there's no way I can do something like that. You know, when you think of an organization, you think of something really big, an event that's booked out, et cetera. But they were like, you know, the and they were very encouraging. And I said, you know what, let's do it together. The more, the merrier, the more, you know, the more people there, the stronger it is. And they were so on board from the get-go. So at 11 p.m. at night, we were just like, we're going to make NW Sisters. Actually, at that time, it wasn't NW Sisters, was it? We didn't actually have a name at that time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's how it started. And then at that time, I was training with um, Maya, who's, the uh, you know, uh, my active. 
she was um, our personal trainer, we would do boxing with her, etc. And because I knew that she was, you know, mashallah, a very practicing sister, who was very, you know, on her dean and very involved with her community, etc. as well, I thought, you know what, let me ask her, we can get her on board. And Alhamdulillah, she was very, very on board. Like from the, the moment I said it, she was so on board, um, which was great. And then we started planning our first event. Um, Zay, do you want to speak more about how we began planning and um, organizing everything? Yeah, so um, Alhamdulillah, we're nearing a year from our first event. The date was exactly 23rd of February, 2020. Um, Alhamdulillah. So um, surprisingly, and as drastic as it sounds, the first event took four days to plan from Tuesday up until <laughs> Sunday. Alhamdulillah, it was an amazing, it was an amazing outcome. Like we, it was a huge success. Unfortunately, we had to turn down a lot of sisters um, because of limited space and the hall that we had at that point. Um, building up to the event, um, if I remember correctly, it started off, um, in our breakfast with Ariel and at so we had morning breakfast and we were discussing our next moves and how we are to launch Northwest Sisters and to make it an actual thing and to start right putting things on paper and in action as well um, so we decided on um, launching a first social event where we um, discussed with the sisters who did attend what we will be launching, what projects we wanted to do. I mean, um, we still have a lot planned, but unfortunately COVID has a way of coming in the way. Um, but yeah, inshallah, we will implement all that we've discussed. Inshallah, yeah. So <clears throat> as um, Zay explained, we had so many plans, like we had so many plans for um, last year's Ramadan that was coming up, for Eid that was coming up, you know, we had, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Obviously, because of COVID, we could not, unfortunately, but Allah, because, because of that, we have a much wider reach now and in our events on like our Holocaust online and in the fitness classes we recently did with Maya, we had like sisters join in from across the world. So not just Northwest London. So if you see our bio, it says Northwest London and beyond um, because our actual events in real life were going to be mainly for NW sisters um, within Northwest London or within London. But now we've got in every single continent in the world. Um, Allahumma barik. So that is how we um, began. That's why why we began for, for the sisterhood. Um, do you guys, do any of you guys want to speak about the sisterhood and the uh, um, uh, sister Lima, you attended our first event and that's where we actually met Lima. Well, I did anyway. I know Zay and her used to go ice skating, you know, didn't know about that guys, thanks. But um, um, so what do you think about our first event and what you found and what motivated you to sort of you know, join and sisters. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, you know, the first event, Alhamdulillah, was amazing, guys. Honestly, like, I know there was lots of stress and everything behind it, but honestly, when I first, like you said, like, I knew Z beforehand, you know, with ice skating and all of that, and she had invited me and um, two other girls to to the event to, like, say, you know, do you want to come? And we were going to go um, to support her, and, you know, and you guys. And when we actually got there, we actually came late. Um, but when we got there, Alhambarak, like they had like different activities, like they had like icebreakers, you had um, I think we did a quiz, was it? That quiz was a bit hectic, but we had a quiz. We had um we had like food and like little cakes and like very like tea party kind of style. And it was really nicely set up and every sister kind of introduced herself, said something about each other. And I think a lot of sisters actually were like, you know what, I actually felt like you know um, I'm meeting new sisters and we had like some aunties as well and mm. we had like really younger girls and like little kids and you know everyone was just really enjoying themselves and like the younger kids were getting involved with the adults and the adults were getting on with like the teenagers and everyone was just kind of you know together and bringing up ideas of how we can help our community and it was just like a really nice you know sisterly feeling like just mm. being together being each other's company you know, being able to, you know, smile with each other, eat with each other, and it was just beautiful. So, you know, it was, it was a job well done, mashallah. Yeah, I think that event, just from the get-go, our first event really showed um, not only the desire for sisterhood, but when we saw it in real life, we really just appreciated being around practicing sisters and um, um, and be able to spend time with them, etc. as Sister Lima said. Um, Hola, what do you think? Because Hola joined after our first event, um, 
Colin, do you want to speak a bit more about NW Sisters and why you joined? Yeah, um, I mean, I've said this to you guys before, but I was a bit sceptical at the start, um, especially when Z was saying, you know, we're going to plan a little event. And that's not to say that I didn't want, you know, something for the sisters, because we were very used to seeing, um, you know, groups for the brothers and they were able to go out, go on picnics, have, you know, halakat, have talks, have lectures. And we wanted something similar for the sisters, but it didn't seem very, like, achievable at the time. And I just thought, you know, is it really our job to do it? But then after a while, I was thinking, if we don't step up to do it, who is going to step up to do it? I think as humans, we're always waiting for the next person to take on, you know, the job that we want to do and stuff. But um, I think it's, it's it's very, like, impressive what you guys did before I joined. Uh, mashallah, it was it was so good like I didn't attend the first event but I heard so much good things about it and I'm just so happy that we actually took the first step to actually do it because if you guys hadn't brainstormed and come up with that we wouldn't have we wouldn't be where we are you know right now so I think it's really admirable and may Allah put so much barakah in it and I think before we get further into the episode um, we'll have a kind word from our sponsors inshallah this episode is, has been kindly sponsored by Dara Fakhama, which is a premium modesto brand in Dubai. They reached out to us on Instagram because they really loved our work. And when we looked at um, um, what they do, we, were, we really loved their high quality dresses. They said they sell abayas, niqabs. And their you know, um, motto is um, modesty and sutra of sisters. So um, please support their page. Check out their stuff, really, really affordable prices, really beautiful abayas and different type of modest dresses that you can um, wear. So please go out onto Instagram and give them a shout out. So on our Instagram story, we asked um, our followers what they wanted to know um, about us and our vision, et cetera, and any questions they had just in general in this for us to speak about in this episode. And one of the questions that we got was quite interesting actually was if there is um, if there are any challenges or conflicts um, between ourselves or um, the, in the work that we do, which I also thought was really, really interesting because I don't really think about that. Because you know, when you're going, when when you're trying to overcome a challenge, you don't really sit there and think about it that often. You just try and concrete, try to overcome it. But um, as a group, um, I don't think we've had any conflict between ourselves. Alhamdulillah, like we're all friends and we, we started off as friends and we have a great friendship between us, Alhamdulillah. Um, however, there were some challenges um, in regards to the work we do, um, some of the responses we received in either our events or on social media, which we'll talk about. So um, who wants to, Khola, do you want to talk about um, some of the challenges we faced? Um, yeah, um, I think as a person who's mostly replying to the DMs, we weren't expecting some of the difficulties that we actually had to, you know, encounter and get over. We really definitely weren't expecting a lot of sisters to you know be dming us asking us for advice and and it wasn't even just regular advice about you know how to deal with low man or you know things things like that it was very like major major topics that personally i think we can all agree we weren't qualified to really like delve into and give professional advice but um we still tried our best alhamdulillah but we really weren't expecting that and it was very strange to start because we were just literally a group of sisters you know we're still very young we we haven't had the most experience in life we we're not like professionals we're not psychologists we're not therapists but we still had these sisters asking us these questions um so that's we weren't expecting that i think that was one of the biggest like struggles we had um on our social media but i think that being said um I think is really important that these sisters do you know try and go and get the professional help we always um tell the sisters you know refer to your local imam or you know go see a therapist or a psychologist because these issues were really really big so i think it's it's a good point to drive home that if you're dealing with something yes seek advice from someone who's your friend or family or maybe even a stranger if that's what you feel comfortable doing but get professional help i think that's a big thing that we need to put out there. But yeah, I think that's one of the biggest struggles we faced on the social media side. Yeah, I completely agree with um, Hola. We were quite taken aback with, um, I guess quite naive on our part um, that we weren't expecting that because obviously when you're on social media, you, you know, anyone can access um, what you're putting out there. So we didn't expect that. But Alhamdulillah, I think working together, and that's why it's so great to have um, 
great so great to have that sisterhood and that support because we all put our own ideas together how do we do this etc if there was a sister who needed financial help we were chipped in and helped her out etc so i think yeah that was definitely one of our um issues that we face on social media and we still continue to by the way we still have dms coming in from sisters and i think that just goes to show no that there is a real absence of support for these sisters as they don't really know who to turn to they from what we've you know we'll go into this more in depth in one of our future episodes inshallah but we have quite very serious cases um as Khala mentioned and these sisters they don't really have anyone to turn to not their family not their friends maybe perhaps they feel judged um so they turn to a group of sisters who they hope can provide that support um but yeah that was definitely one of our issues um i think there's another issue that we also faced and we realized that in our first event Zay, do you want to <laughs> speak about it yeah um I think, well, having, as back to what I said, like having the ideas on paper and talking about it and then having our first events, um, like Ariel was saying, um, the main issue that we faced was keeping it together and keeping to our aim as a group and ensuring that um, the goals that we had as a group and as sisters manifested itself in that social uh, meeting. Um, I feel like because there was a mix of ages, mixed of um, interests and various various factors, I believe, um, that factored into it, um, there were a few topics that were addressed not in the wisest of ways and um, me and Ariel had to contain it. When I say mm. contain it, it was more of... Damage control. Big time. Yeah, big time. a lot of damage control before it got out of hand. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, I feel like that was our one of the, our only events that we've ever had something like that. I mean, considering it was the first one, it was a bit of a shock for us. But Alhamdulillah, our second and third and even fourth event, we didn't have much um, damage control to do as such. It all ran smoothly from that point onwards, Alhamdulillah. I think it just came back to being prepared because obviously mm -hmm. when you do start a new initiative, there are so many things to look out for because we sort of just did like we were motivated we're like let's just do it we created it let's do an event found a place um on whatsapp group sent out the message you know come join us etc that we were quite taken aback with the event so and without going into too much detail was basically we were having this conversation as you know in our in our um, social meeting and we saw me and Zay just asked the sisters like you know we're here today what do we want to achieve from this meeting what do we want to achieve from this um gathering that we are in today so as nw sisters like we mentioned our goals and our vision for sisterhood how can we um put that into action so we were sort of expecting answers about you know our community and you know homelessness or initiatives for sisters etc all these things and some of the topics or two topics in particular that were brought up were a little bit wild to say the least um and a lot of it wasn't really an argument just uh, uh really an argument but we have an altercation between some sisters who had differing points of view and we had to control that very very quickly and mind you neither of us um zay was brilliant but um neither of us were we're not you know trained we haven't seen training in doing these kind of public speaking or how to manage all these things so um on the spot we sort of just had to handle it and um, like they said alhamdulillah we never had an issue like that at our events ever again and every from every event we learn a lot in terms of management in terms of you know um, what we're doing etc the structure etc so alhamdulillah it's a journey that you learn from um sister lima from the um Halakat perspective from that side of things um what challenges do you think we have faced or that you've noticed or that we've had to overcome or we have overcome um okay so one of the main things i would say in terms of halakha and being lead like leading the halakha is it's a big pressure i would say in terms of like just feeling that bit of anxiety and that bit of pressure of that you need to get you need to say the right thing and bear in mind that i'm not or any of us don't you know want to go into delve into subjects like fifth and you know and more serious topics without knowledge because we know that's not from the religion we can't speak without knowledge we can't be you know um advising the wrong thing so we have to be very careful and alhamdulillah like i've been okay with like i make sure that i plan everything and i know that i won't 
and even if this is start um, changing the subject we won't go into speak we'll kind of like cut it down like um z and ariel were just saying about having not having the skills but they managed to you know kind of um close whatever was going on down and you know alhamdulillah you know we 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 do we do plan everything beforehand and we try not to you know speak about things that you know we shouldn't be speaking about i remember we had one um we had one halakha on i'm gonna say it right this time misogyny right oh yeah <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said something else last time misogynism or something on misogyny and we um i generally get quite you know passionate about that kind of stuff and i could go really deep and really into it and you know start start letting out my anger and my passion but you know hamza when you're on something like that you know we shouldn't we shouldn't do that hamza i was and with my sisters to help me you know i was able to you know control myself and calm that down and um, you know hamza has been really re gone really well and like you know every was saying before you know how we want to do this that we have different uh, sisters of different ages of you know different and background, some being revert, some being, you know, um, young youth girls who, you know, go to school and they don't have that, like, maybe Muslim friends and that Muslim mm -hmm. companionship that they should have. So being able to provide, like, real life scenarios um, in with topics, so whether it's about hijab, whether it's about, you know, um, parents, we had a halakha on parents, you know, just those simple things that kind of just delve into real life matters that sisters can, you know, um, understand and relate to and kind of find tips that can help them work their way around it rather than going into you know fit issues and things that you know we can't speak about so alhamdulillah it's worked out really well um and yeah yeah alhamdulillah i completely agree and sister has been amazing leading our halakhats and just being so organized etc um and i think i totally agree with what you said about or sisters for a place for them to come and share their ideas. Um, the response that we receive in a holocaust now is great. I mean, sisters really get involved. They like to share their opinions, even when things get really heated. And um, it's a great place for sisters to learn, um, but also share knowledge with each other and their opinions, etc. So um, yeah, that's what we, we've spoken uh, briefly about some of the struggles we faced and our roles. And hopefully you've got to know us a little bit better by now. Um, we're going to go into the topic of sisterhood and what it means to us as individuals, but it will, what also um, how sisterhood defines NW sisters, because that is the foundation um, of our group and um, what we aim to do in the future. So um, what we have always aimed to do is um, we would like to have events for sisters, a community for sisters and all types of sisters whether if you are just not practicing at all whether you have just started to practice whether you are super practicing and even for really really young sisters who perhaps might not have practicing sisters around them and they want um you know uh, a sisterhood a community to turn to so um yeah even from our events like we mentioned previously we since we found that sisters have made really good friendships you know formed really good friendships with each other um through our events which is literally what we um, hope to aim so now we're going to um discuss inshallah what companionship and sisterhood means to us because obviously that is the foundation of nw sisters is for northwest sisters to create a community a positive community for um muslim sisters for to come together a community to turn to um to ask for help from and just in general, a really nice place to be, even for young sisters um, or older sisters, um, to come together, make friendships, um, seek advice from each other, etc. And that is the foundation of NW Sisters to be united upon Quran and Sunnah and support each other. That's that's literally, I think, um, in as a summary, what we are. Um, Zay, what what does sisterhood mean to you? Um, personally, um, I believe that sisterhood amongst many things but mainly um there's a huge importance that i put to sisterhood um because i believe that it's all about those who are around you those who share the same aim as you those who are mm -hmm. like-minded who are striving to make you a better person and to make themselves a better better people um those around you who are also striving to attain Jannah, which is our end goal as uh, Muslims. 
Um, so the whole idea of sisterhood is to have a strong network of people around you that will be able to support you and be there for you, not only in this life, but also the next, inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah, that was a very, very um, great summary of what sisterhood is to Zay and as NW sisters. Um, Sister Lima, what about you? Yeah, I was going to say on what Z said, you know, she said that, you know, um, there's a hadith in Tirmidhi where it says a person is likely to follow, um, you know, somewhat like their friend is someone who has faith. So someone, if you follow a friend that has faith, you know, be careful on whom you befriend. So if we, you know, if we find these good communities where everyone is together and the sisterhood is new strong and, you know, our main goal, like Z said, is, you know, Jannah and that's what we want to attain. And we have like those similar, you know, views and we're there to help each other and lend our, you know, hands to, you know, help our community. Then, you know, we've chosen, you know, the people that we want to go to Jannah with. And that's what's amazing with us, like how Hamza, we're all like friends and being friends, we... How we were friends not just because you know we met each other at a coffee shop or over breakfast we're friends first and foremost because of our religion and our deen mm -hmm. and that is a kind of like the rope it's like a rope binding us together and it's so beautiful and we met at different times and you know different places but it was that one thing that just made us you know connect and it was it's just beautiful because of our deen and our striving for Jannah yeah absolutely completely agree um and Paula, what about you yeah i think going off of what um sister lima said um i think something really funny about us is that a lot of us hadn't even seen each other's faces apart from those of us who like lived each other let each other went to school together a lot of us hadn't even even seen each other's faces and we were well into you know uh, nw sisters and our events and oh, everything yeah. and it's only very very recently that we actually seen um everyone's seen everyone else's faces properly so that just goes to show that sisterhood isn't really about, you know, how close you live to them or, you know, if you went to school together, or if you have the same job, because all of those things, you know, you can have friends because of those reasons. But I think the main reason why your friendship and your sisterhood will be solidified is if it's on the basis of, you know, the Quran and Sunnah. And I think that's that's really, really important. Um, I think something else that I think is so, so important to me is seeking knowledge, having friends who are going to, you know, motivate you to seek knowledge and not just be um, a Muslim who just, you know, is okay with doing the bare minimum. Um, I think a lot of people are on their journey to start seeking knowledge. A lot of sisters are just practicing. And that's not to say that there's anything wrong with that. But I think we should all be striving and trying our best to even if it's one hour a day to just seek a little bit of knowledge, learn a page of and, you know, learn a hadith, watch a lecture, but take it in and try to, you know, establish those things that you've learned in your life. Seek knowledge, I think, is just one of the most important things, I think, in sisterhood and just having sisters who are going to motivate you to do that as well. Yeah, exactly. Really well said, guys. And I think you've now heard from all of us, um, or the four of us on, on this panel, um, what sisterhood means to us and how we try to create that sisterhood and create that community um, through NW Sisters upon Quran and Sunnah, uniting sisters together to create a beautiful, you know, network of sisters who can turn to each other, motivate each other, be there for each other, um, inshallah. Um, so, moving on to what our vision is and what is it that we are trying to um, establish. So, like we mentioned, we do want to hold events and obviously we've had to put a pause on that because of COVID, um, but we have been doing a Holocaust online every Sunday. Um, we have recently started a new project um, where we would like to, as NW Sisters, as we are all about supporting each other, supporting other sisters, um, we have our project whereby we are sending out um, hampers to those sisters who work in the NHS because as you all probably know we're going through a very very difficult time and have been going through a very difficult time for the past year and those who are working in the NHS on the frontline workers in the emergency services you know the hard work that they're doing and key workers in general but we're really focused on the NHS um, right now 
and just the effort that they're putting in, putting their own lives at risk to save others. And um, we are, I personally know quite a few people, quite a few sisters who are, you know, nurses or um, in medicine who are going to it, etc. junior doctors. So we really want to recognize their hard work. Um, and it's just amazing, you know, seeing sisters, you know, practicing sisters or who um, are on Dean, but they are really trying to make that difference to their community and to the, literally to the country. Um, so yeah, that's one of our projects. So sending out hampers is just, it's not anything big. It's just our way of saying, showing our solidarity with them and appreciating what they are doing for their country, which is, you know, outstanding. And I know across the world, um, doctors, nurses, key workers all are helping support in their country. But in the UK for the NHS, we know that um, just how hard they are working. Um, um, Zay, do you want to talk about Maya and our fitness classes? Um, yeah, so in terms of the our fitness um, program that we did, February fitness, our fitness club, sorry, that we did on this month, this in February, I had to double check that. Um, the aim of it was um, to unite sisters, another part of the sisterhood um, aspect of Northwest Sisters. And it was run by Sister Maya, Jazakallah Khair, um, as um, Ariel mentioned at the beginning of the podcast. She's um, a member of the Northwest Sisters, but she's also a personal trainer. So she ran um, the fitness club this February. Alhamdulillah, we had an amazing turnout. I'm, I was quite surprised. And if I must say overwhelmed with the amount of sisters that turned up but alhamdulillah it just goes to show that if you provide something for the sisters and there's a huge need for it sisters will be able will um go for it will use it will um benefit from it so the aim of it um the aim of the fitness club was for um seeing as we're in lockdown here in the UK um our third lockdown nice and um we're mainly at home, not much leaving the house except for essentials and so on. Um, so the idea behind the fitness club was to get us moving and to keep active while being at home. Um, and of course, our bodies are a manner from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this um, tied in as an aspect of that to look after ourselves. Um, for those of you who have attended the, fi um, the fitness clubs every Monday and Thursday, um, I'm sure you would vouch for the amazingness of Maya Active on them, Allahumma Barik. She um, made us work really hard um, during the sessions. Uh, and yeah, um, Khawla, is there anything you want to add? Yeah, I think um, we've got a few DMs from sisters actually, who are asking if there was any going to be any more fitness club related things. And for the time being, I think we, we're going to give it a rest, um, just finish up the February classes and give that a rest. But um, on my Actives page, she's actually doing the March challenge. So if that's your cup of tea and you were looking for more fitness stuff, then I think this is perfect for you. It's going to go on the same like type of uh, program as ours. You're going to have two classes and a workout plan to follow um, in the on the rest of the days because you really shouldn't be just working out two days a week and just chilling for the rest of them so if that's your cup of tea go ahead and go to her page um, other than that I'd say just keep out an eye for the hampers for helpers there's going to be um, a link where you can send in your nominations inshallah and we're going to be choosing uh, people to send out the hampers for and I think to end um, Sister Lima is going to give us a small hadith to wrap up what we've been speaking about and you know just mention the importance of sisterhood in Islam and you know, sum up our goals as NW sisters. To wrap up, I just want to share that, you know, with this whole thing and the fact that we started this and NW sisters all for the means of sisterhood and, you know, that companionship and, you know, really in like, you know, being part of our community. And there's actually a hadith in um, Sahih Bukhari and Muslim that says that the Muslims in their mutual love and kindness and compassion are like the human body where when one of its parts are basically in pain that the entire body feels the pain and you know both in like you know sleep and in like fever and you're showing that how that we have to um you know that just being being a kind person being someone who's compassionate being someone who is very you know towards their 
their you know their family friends being a part of the sisters you know when you're when you're not like that there's that kind of pain that kind of like that pang of like loneliness or you know that desire to be around them so you know do your best to try and be around you know good muslim sisters and you know uh, you know with your family even this time of lockdown you know try and be together and just one more um hadith to you know share in this from Tirmidhi it says a pet is that if a person loves his brother or his sister and them you know he should inform him of this fact and you know if you you know if you love someone just share it if you love your parents tell them you love them if you love your sisters tell them you love them all for the sake of Allah so guys I love you all for the sake of Allah so um inshallah you know we we are always united we're united in the dunya and we're united in the hereafter and so I mean, and we all love you for the sake of Allah as well. Yeah, um, Barakallah Fiki for sharing those um, hadith. Very beautiful. So, um, we're going to wrap up this episode today, inshallah. Um, Barakallah Fiki for sisters joining us. We hope we've given a somewhat um, decent introduction to NW sisters and you understand us better and our vision, etc. Um, big shout out to Darul um, Fakhama one more time for sponsoring this episode um please check them out on instagram we will put everything on our story um and our highlights so please do check them check out my active um yeah so for joining us